Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm not a legal expert uh, either. I am not a politician. Uh, I give express my views from my from my point of view. I have uh, worked in the international in the United Nations for 15 years, and I have been. Uh, uh, chairing a working group of the United Nations intergovernmental group on development for uh, for several years and uh, I continue to uh, work at the international level so this my point of view is from uh, from that angle uh, I have already said this several times but let me um, uh, let me just uh, uh, limit my uh, the points that I'm trying to make to three uh, and I would like to, to respond to um, the narrative that is being, uh, that is being uh, propagated in the Western media uh, and, um, and through well, the p position of Western governments primarily, which reflects also the position, which is a partial uh, reflection of what actually is going on inside Sri Lanka and a partial reflection of the debate in Sri Lanka. And, and the, 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 the position that is being portrayed outside is that of uh, the previous Prime Minister, uh, who is known to be uh, a Western ally. And uh, I think it is, uh, it should, it, uh, as journalists, the media should have a position that is impartial. And when you, when you report on events, um, I don't know how many of you actually reflect, give a balanced view of what is going on. This is my main preoccupation because I follow the Western media very closely. And I used to look at the French media, I look at the German media, I look at the Spanish media, uh, and I see the British and the Americans and the Canadians and the Australians, and I'm, I'm following it very closely. The, the, the message that is going through is that this is an anti-democratic coup. Now that is a language that we use by the former finance minister Mangala Samaravira and by the former prime minister Ranil Wickremesinghe, and it is the the whole discussion is presented as an as an unconstitutional decision taken by the president of the country. That is the removal of the former prime minister and the appointment of the new prime minister, the prorogation of parliament is considered unconstitutional. And the focus of the, 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 the whole discussion is on reconvening the parliament. Uh, so this is, the, this is the angle that is being taken by both the former prime minister and by Western governments. Uh, and, 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 I, it, it, and it is done with a particular purpose. So I, I would like to, to point that out, that this is a one-sided support. Uh, there is no reflection of uh, what the other side is saying or what the ordinary people are saying. I wonder how many of you actually go on the streets and talk to the people, go to the east. I've been recently to, to uh, Pasikuda and to Batiklo, and I was told by people on the road, in fact by former LTT cadre, that when, they will, when the next elections they will vote Mahindra Rajapaksa. So I said, uh, go, to this, go down and the street, talk to the people, go to the shops, go and talk to the three-wheel drivers, talk to taxi drivers in their language. And you will hear another point of view than what you are hearing from the politicians. So it's a point I, I want to make. Another thing that's coming in the media, in the Western media, is this talk about bloodbath. Again, it's coming from that same side, inside Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, the, pres the killing of the, the, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation worker has been presented as, a, as though it's a big... Uh, it's, it is a, it is, it, it's, it's unacceptable, any killing. But the way it's presented is it is presented as though this is what's happening. Everybody's being killed in the country. And there's a war criminal in power right now. And, uh, and, and they don't say that the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation worker was actually killed by the security officer of the last government, the previous minister. So it's not said. And then, of course, they present uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa as a Chinaman. Now, uh, this is totally wrong and misleading. And this has to do with the particular geopolitical strategic interests of those who are propagating that line. Uh, as I, 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 I listened to a very interesting interview yesterday on Vion by Rajiva Vijay Singer. And he, he was asked this question about uh, 
Mahindra uh, Rajapaksa being a Chinaman. He says he's not a Chinaman, he's a Sri Lankan man. And he's very much a Sri Lankan man because he defends the domestic economy. So I think uh, all those things have to be very carefully looked at. And, and the other speakers have already spoken about the hypocrisy and duplicity of the reporting. And, and, and I would like to just bring some additional examples. Uh, why didn't the, the press, uh, the, I'm speaking now about the foreign media, when the, when the previous um, uh, Prime Minister, together with the President, dissolved Parliament to prevent the COPE report on the central bank bond issue scam being made pub public, there was no, no uh, outcry about that out there. There was silence on the whole central bank perpetual treasuries bond scams under Ranil Vikramasinghe's regime. And, 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 he, and in fact, the bond scam has been described as the biggest ever corruption scandal and the biggest ever cover-up story in the history of Sri Lanka. There is no news about that. Then there's silence on the postponement of the local government elections for nearly two years by the previous regime. And then there is a silence about the, the, uh, when the same president appointed a prime minister uh, in, in January 2015 with a UNF, uh, when, when UNF had only 60 seats in parliament, 46 for UNP. And, and the, the then prime minister was forced to leave DM Jai Ratna. Although he's, he, the UPFA had 144 seats, nobody said at that time that he didn't have the numbers. So, and, and, and um, uh, I, I can give a whole list of things, but also if in terms of what's going on outside. Nobody said anything when Germany, for instance, when Germany was unable to form a government for five months. Nobody's made that, made an issue out of it. When, when, the, uh, when Belgium was without a government for 541 days, nobody said anything about that. And when Northern Ireland was without a government for more than that, nobody said anything about that. So, uh, and, and the assassination uh, in, uh, attempt, the allegations of assassination against the president and Gotabe Rajapaksa. Uh, no Western government called to call for a credible investigation of those plots. Why not? So, I, I mean, I have a lot of problems with the way this is being reported outside. And, and uh, every time I read the Western press, I think they are in another world. So why are they in another world? That's my question. Why, why is there a different narrative? Um, so, and that's my first point. The second point is, and it is related to the external question that uh, Dr. Gunaruan raised, is the external intervention in the domestic political order. It is a violation of international law. It is a violation of the principle on which multilateral system is based, which is sovereign equality of states and the right of peoples to self-determination. And it is the right of all peoples to determine their own political, economic, social, cultural system in which they want to live in. And all countries have to respect it. They're obliged to respect it. But obviously this is not the case when it has to do with Western interests in they're not only in my, our country, but in also other countries, especially develop, developing countries, where they have the global south, where they have a strategic interest. So, uh, and, 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 and just a couple of things that I find really outrageous, and that's this special meeting of foreign envoys with an ousted prime minister in Temple Trees the day after he was already, uh, a new prime minister had been appointed. Now, what is the normal procedure for communication uh, of uh, foreign envoys when they, uh, with regard to their host country. The procedure is that they have to go, the normal channel is you go through the foreign secretary. You don't go straight to the president or the prime minister or anybody. You go, not even to the foreign minister. You go through the foreign secretary. That's the normal channel of communication. The Western countries have systematically violated that fundamental principle of going through an established channel. That is one point. But if, let's say, they had to talk to the president or they had to sp speak to the prime minister, then they could have met with the, with the, pri the president of the country. He, he was not ousted. There was no problem with his being president. I don't know if there's a problem with his being a president. But they could have gone and talked to him. No, they chose to go and speak to Ranil Vikramasinghe, who was already out. Instead of staying out of that, that problem that has been created artificially by those who have been defeated. This, it, this, I disagree that this is a political crisis. This is an, a crisis so-called that has been 
created, it's been created artificially and presented as a political crisis. It is a crisis, I see it is a systemic crisis, and I will go into that later. It is a systemic crisis. This is the result of a systemic crisis. And it's a problem of intervention in a political order of a foreign state, a sovereign state. Then, the whole discussion in this, in the uh, following that special meeting in in temple trees. That's when the story, the narrative was spread. Soon after that, that this was unconstitutional. So there was a kangaroo court, in fact, effectively functioning inside that in, inside temple trees. There was a decision taken to pro promote a particular narrative, and that narrative was unconstitutionality of the president's decision. And they have decided that it's unconstitutional. And, and, and I have seen even to, in, in today's papers and yesterday, when the, 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 the British and others say, this is unconstitutional, you have to reconvene the parliament. Because it is, the decision was unconstitutional to prorogue the parliament. Uh, so they and it comes as an order, because it's always connected to the Human Rights Council Resolution 30-1, which you all know is, was, is uh, uh, that, that resolution itself violates international law. And they base it on that, uh, there's a link to the International uh, the Council Resolution, and it is posed as a threat constantly in the interventions, also through sanctions, threats of sanctions, travel advisories. What are travel advisories? It's to block people from traveling here. And that is why the whole story about bloodbath in the country, or that people are being killed on the street here. So this um, th that's on the, on the question of the of uh, foreign intervention, and I would like to to um, to to come to this point. about why I th wh what is this crisis? What is this crisis? And that's a version that you don't hear because it doesn't suit those of those who are pro propagating the the idea of a political crisis. The real issue is, in my view that it is, it is the opposite of what is described as, they describe as an anti-democratic coup. It is a legitimate, it's a result of the legitimate reaction of a people to a systemic crisis, which is economic, social, financial, ecological, energetic, alimentary, cultural. It's a systemic crisis caused by a Western-backed regime of Ranil Vikramasinghe, which of which the people have been victims and they have been reacting to this the people and they have been out on the street and there have been strikes there are struggles going on everywhere the railway workers the nurses the professionals the students the public servants the plantation workers etc 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 i haven't seen anything reported on that outside but that this when the a partner of the national unity government left the 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 the, the so-called national unity government it's because there was pressure from below and they felt that pressure. So, and that is why they left. Because they're also politicians. Don't forget. And they had to go to the people for the vote. So they left. That is why they left. And that is why the president probably had to take the decision he took. Because he, the, the regime, the, the, the government of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe was deeply unpopular. And because he was following the policies, the neoliberal policies that were determined by in Western capitals, by their capital, the, 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 the oligarchies in those countries. And they were in the process of transforming or re-engineering the state to in favor of foreign capital. So, and were, the whole state was, there was a constitution on the, on, on, on the way, a new constitution. All of a sudden they think that the constitution is great, but that's the constitution they wanted to change, fundamentally change. So there was a, a total, and, the, and there was the, the, you all know that the, the rupee had, was collapsing, the economy had collapsed, there was no, there was no uh, business going on, there was nothing, even construction had halted. And the local businesses, even the national capital was in trouble. And that is why even the national capital turned against Ranil Vikramasinghe's government because he was his policies supported the 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 interests of foreign capital not sri lankan capital so you also have it's just not only a uprising or discontent among the poor people but it was a discontent among the national bourgeoisie also and if you speak to a, a, a business national business businessman here he will tell you that 
So I think that the sole purpose of distorting the reality is one, is to internationalize a purely domestic matter. Why? To rescue an ally and thereby protect the West's geopolitical interests in the region. It is this internationalization, I believe, and not the reaction of the people that is anti-democratic. Why? Because it takes internationalization, takes decision making beyond the reach of the people which we, is the objective of the neoliberal policies and the re-engineering of the state, is to remove, is to what they call depoliticize. Depoliticize meaning the decisions have to be taken by a, a Western oligarchy. When the whole economy is controlled, it's not only the economy, the political life, social life, cultural life is controlled by a Western oligarchy, a small minority of capital owners. You, they remove the, the right to decide away from the ordinary people. So this is, I think, the reason why they have, um, uh, why it, what is happening is happening. Now, on this whole debate on constitutionality and yes and no, and yes, it is constitutional and prerogative, parliament is not constitutional and this, why? Why all this debate? There are different points of view, obviously. Obviously. But there's only one point of view that is projected by the Western media. But there are different points of view. Now, what is the solution if there are different points of view? There are different interpretations of the Constitution. Now, I, don't know what the, I don't know what is right and what is wrong. But I know that Const Article 125 of the Constitution says if there is a difference on the on, on interpretation of the Constitution, you go to the Supreme Court. Why is Ranil Vikramasinghe not going to the Supreme Court? If it is unconstitutional, why have a debate with me and you and the media and, 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 and every, all of us here? I don't know why. I, I don't, you know, even in murder, murder cases, there are lawyers who defend two sides. You will have one lawyer defending the murderer and another one defending the victim. And they will both say that they are right. So who decides? That is why you have courts. That's, that is why you have uh, arbitration systems. To, to, to resolve disputes, dispute settlement. So why, if they have an issue with the constitution, and with the application, the unconstitutional, it may be unconstitutional, I don't know, maybe it is. But then ask the Supreme Court. That is one way to do it. It's the legal. Then you have a political option. That's another way to go and find out whether it's a legitimate decision. Because ultimately, a constitution is based on the will of the people. So you go to the people. And how do you go to the people? You call an election. You call it general election. Why, why then, why are they not calling for a general election? I'm speaking about those who are challenging the constitutionality of the decision that's been taken. Because the challenge is coming from one side. So, and the others are on the defensive, but they shouldn't be on the defensive. So, uh, there, those are the two options that are, that are there. The reason why they're not going is because they're not sure. They're not sure that the Supreme Court will decide in their favor. Secondly, why are they not going to the people? Because they know they will lose. The local government elections results was very clear. Why, have they de why did they postpone local government elections for nearly three years or two years? Why are they, have they postponed provincial council elections? Mandate of six of them has expired. Why are they not going for PC elections? So. Uh, and the reflection of the people is obvious in mass de street demonstrations. The recent UNP, the demonstration organized in front of the, um, the uh, temple trees a few days ago, that was, that was a partisan demonstration. It was in favor of the prime minister, former. So it was not a reflection of natural reaction of the people to what their, their living conditions. It was an organized one, but it was, it's not a spontaneous reaction. And also I would like to point out, I don't know if you've reported on, for instance, that the three-wheel associa three associations have de had decided to drop the price of, of, the, uh, of, of the second, from the second kilometer onwards. Why? After the new prime minister announced that he was going to reduce the fuel prices, he's going to introduce a new, new system to calculate the fuel prices, a new formula. 
and immediately in support, and they said it's in support of the of the Mahindra Rajapaksa's proposal that they had decided from midnight, I think it was yesterday or day before, to drop the price of the uh, from the second kilometer onwards. The same with the Canteen Association. They dropped the prices of uh, bread and, and tea and it's also in support of the present regime. So there is, there, is a, there is a legitimacy, there is a popular legitimacy. In, there is a recognition of the new prime minister and his government in practice. So that's what constitutions are about, are based on the popular will. There is no law behind the constitution. The law is the will of the people. So what do you have today? You have UNP MPs have decided to support the new government, including accepting ministerial positions. So there is a, there's a let, all this is part of giving legitimacy. Then you have a TNC, TNA uh, decision to opt for neutrality. Then you have uh, governors of all the provinces have promised to support the new promise, uh, prime minister. Then you have the National Trivial Association. Then, very interestingly, I read yesterday or day before, a group of families have disappeared from Mulaitevo. They went to see the new prime minister and they expressed their confidence in, in him. And they said, we, did, we, we were expecting something else from the Ranil Vikramasinghe government, nothing happened. Now these are Tamils from Mulaitevo, victims of, of, the, of the war time, who go to Mahindra Rajapaksa and say they have confidence in him. Now isn't that something important to report about? So I think uh, uh, th there should be a much more balanced approach. There has to be um, uh, honesty in reporting. And uh, instead of media, mainstream media primarily, reporting on uh, the, the version that is provided by those who pay them. And this everybody knows. This is what the mainstream media is doing. They have been completely bought over by the neoliberal logic. So I think if, you are, if, 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 if the journalists are to be credible, if you, have to, if you are to be credible, then go back and be impartial. Report on events on all sides of the story. And there are mechanisms for decision making. It is not up to a foreign country to decide. It is the people of the country to decide. That's what the whole international system is based on. Thank you.